Welcome back once again guys, I'm Mike Burrows from Stanceworks and we're here working on this 1981 Ferrari 308 GTBI and we are slowly but surely swapping in a turbocharged Honda K24 into it. Now I know I said at the end of the last episode there is nothing left to do aside from starting to put tubes in this thing and I lied just a little bit. I found one tab that I need to cut off, it's in the way and I realized there's a bunch of paint that I need to grind off before we can really start tack welding stuff in. But we are there, we are at the goal line, we are fabricating, we're gonna get out the tube bender today and really start putting some structure back into this car and I'm really pumped. I'm excited to tell you guys a lot of the thought process that I've had and kind of explain some of the decisions that I've made off of camera because I'm doing a lot of thinking. And I'm excited to show you guys how to use a tubing bender and how to get some of this stuff done. I think we're gonna learn a lot. I'm excited to make some good progress. I'm gonna quit yapping, hop in the car and cut that tab out and we'll see how far we get. Now, I suppose it's smart to show you guys what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And if you'll see, we've got our original upper control arm mounts here that we need to re-brace, re-triangulate. And there's a lot of structure behind them that is honestly the primary structure for the back of the car. It, it really supports the entire thing. And up above it, we've got this cross member, and this is what we were aiming to get to in the last episode. I imagine myself tying some tubing into this. However, I've come to the decision that I want to move this. This doesn't serve a ton of purpose right here. I'd rather locate it in plane between these where the structure is more needed because we're not going to have a trunk floor right there anymore. And if we do, we don't need this stout member to be there. So the first thing I need to do if I'm going to put material between these kind of vertical members is to cut this tab off which is welded around it used to kind of come off and have something hanging off here I cut it off before so I'm going to start by getting this guy off and then we're going to clean some paint off of each side so that we have some clean material to work with so let's do it Out of the way, I grabbed a tape measure and measured the distance between these two vertical chassis members. When doing this, it's important to get as close as possible because if you're too short, your piece is more or less useless and you don't want to be wasting any more tube than you have to. Following that, I got out the metal chop saw and on this one I have a special metal cutting blade which is really helpful if you have the funds to snag one. I was fortunate enough that my neighbor dropped this one off and gave it to me. If you don't have one of these blades though, a normal chop blade for metal will work just fine. It just makes a bigger mess and takes a bit longer to cut with. I then normally take a rag covered in acetone and clean the oils off of the steel that come on it from the mill. And then I take some Scotch-Brite and clean the ends so that they're nice and clean and easy to weld to and easier to see what I'm doing if I make marks on them to make this thing fit. Here I'm test fitting the tube and you can see that it fits reasonably well and holds itself up without much issue. You want to make sure that your tubes fit nice and tight to make welding as easy as possible and as strong as possible. Filling gaps is not the strong way to do things. Here I'm getting out my welder, and this is a Dynasty 200 TIG machine. Now, I'm going to admit right now, up front, I am not a professional TIG welder whatsoever. In fact, I'm quite the amateur. I've got quite a few hours in, in practice on the bench, and I've welded a number of things for practical purposes, but this will be the first time I'm really TIG welding tube in a car. So you guys will have to be a bit patient, because this is going to be a learning process for me, and I'm bringing you guys along. With that said, I do welcome constructive criticism, but don't come at me too hard for mistakes. Like I said, I'm learning here. So we've got one tube stuck into the car, at least for the time being. I wanna make sure it's exactly what I want before I weld it in completely. Now, the tube that you guys just watched me put in there, once I climbed into the engine bay and got to see what you guys did, I realized I was unhappy with some of the gaps. And instead of grinding it and making it fit on camera, I figured we'll save that kind of stuff for a little bit more interesting tubes. 
and I went on cut another and made sure that all those gaps were nice and tight. So now we are ready to start working on the tubes that are going to attach to it. And that means it's time to get out the tubing bender. So I'm gonna show you guys this absolutely incredible tool and how I'm gonna use it to get this job done. This is my Model 32 JD squared tubing bender. And it's an air over hydraulic tubing bender that will bend pretty much anything that you decide to put into it. The purpose of a tubing bender is exactly what it sounds like. This bends tubing on a specific radius so that you can do things like building a roll cage or a chassis. And pretty much any roll cage that you've ever seen, aside from miter cut trophy truck cages, are built with one of these. If you're wondering why you need a tubing bender, this machine allows you to put bends into tubing without crimping it or deforming the tube. And it's one of these that's needed in order to bend racing legal roll cages. There are a lot of different configurations of tubing bender. There are manual ones, there are digital ones. This one is a happy medium, and I definitely would recommend one of these over a hand crank bender. So now that you know what it is, let me explain why it's mounted this way, because if you've seen one of these before, you've probably only seen it mounted horizontally. At least that was the case for me for a long time. Normally these are mounted horizontal because that's kind of an easier way to use them, at least on the surface. But my former business partner Riley taught me that it's a lot easier to see if your bends are in plane if you have it mounted vertically. Your eyes can see vertical a lot more easily than they can see horizontal once you start really spreading a tube out. If you're bending something up that has a number of bends, this is the way to do it and I haven't turned back since. Now. We have a number of dies for this thing. We're gonna go on and put an inch and a half die in, and I've chosen an inch and a half tubing because the square tubing in the back of the Ferrari is also an inch and a half, and those will line up nicely. So let's go on and put a piece of tube in this thing, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use it. The way that this tool works is pretty simple. It's about as simple as something like this gets. There are two dies. One is curved, which is this one here and it is effectively pushed by this air over hydraulic ram down below through this arm and this pin that locks them together. Now below it is a second die and this pushes the tube against the rotating die and together they allow a tube to get bent between them. By putting a tube in and of course making sure that it's not going to move, These are now locked together, and when the ram has force applied to it, it's going to draw the tube through the device. Now, there you guys have it. That is a nicely bent piece of tube, bent to 40 degrees, give or take. So, now let's find out how it sits in the car. So here I am test fitting the part in the car, and this is sometimes kind of tough to do when the material isn't coped at all. A lot of the times your piece just won't fit where it's supposed to go. In this case, I'm able to lay it on top and draw some overhead bird's eye view lines of what I need to cut to at least get me started in fitting this part. This is one of those skills that comes with time, but eventually you'll get a knack for knowing where to draw and what to cut off to get you started. I wanted to see how the tube looked if I flipped it around, and that was a no-go. Now it's just a matter of cutting off the parts that I outlined on the car. So you guys can kind of see here 
what the first couple of notches are getting us. We've got a long way to go. There's still some big gaps, but we've got lots of room to work with and we are well on our way. So we're gonna keep whittling away at this until we get it right where we want it. Now, for anybody watching this who's never worked with tubes before and has never made a cage, the process of coping one tube to another can and does take a lot of time to accomplish, especially as you get tubes with more bends and more aggressive copes on them like the one I'm working on now that happens to span nearly a foot. My process for this is a process of elimination, slow and steady, removing one millimeter at a time, walking back to the car, making a mark, rinse and repeat until the tube fits up the way that I want it to. Somebody else out there might have a better process, but this is the one that has worked best for me. But with that said, don't feel bad if you wind up trashing a lot of tube. Anybody that does this knows that's just how it goes. Between bends that don't work, that don't fit, copes that wind up too short, it's just part of the process, but eventually you get the hang of it and you'll find yourself ruining less and less tube. I'm thankful I got this one on the first try because I haven't done this in several months, but thankfully it's working out. Here's what the final cope looks like. You can get an idea of the somewhat complex shape of the notch, even though this is admittedly a pretty simple cope as far as copes go. So it's tacked in there. I'm gonna go on and spin the camera around and show you guys the at least current final result and ultimately what we were working towards because now there's another side to do. So this is what we were after. And overall, I think it's gonna work really well. It's gonna dodge the transmission wonderfully and it's gonna provide a ton of support. And as a bonus, I flipped the tube around and confirmed that it fits the same on the other side and it does. So we've just gotta repeat this process identically a second time. Now, I will have to figure out how I'm gonna weld deep down in that ditch there, but I'm gonna cross that bridge when I get to it. Overall, I think this is gonna work really well. Now, that tube is only one of several that we're gonna put in there. We're gonna have supports that go up, like the ones that we cut out, and some that go down to the original engine cross member. So this is not the only tube that I'm putting in there to make up for what we've cut out. It's just where we're getting started. We do have the matching one to do for the other side, and I'm gonna go on and start on that one and see if I can't get it knocked out for our next episode, as well as a few more tubes, but I figured now is a good place to stop for this one. I appreciate you guys joining in. I hope you guys liked this episode. I'm excited we're finally to the point of doing some fabrication and getting our hands really dirty and actually making something. I'm excited for you guys to come along in the process of me learning to TIG weld. I'm excited to teach you guys what I know about tube work, and this is gonna be exciting. I'm pumped. As always, thank you for watching, for subscribing, liking. That stuff means a ton to me. I'm excited that this channel continues to grow. I'm excited where we're going. I will catch you guys next week. Thanks again.